Nagua Health is uh, reducing, eradicating the waterborne diseases and respiratory diseases through providing water filters and improved cook stoves. This will help the population to improve their health conditions while uh, saving money that they normally spend for firewood or for medical services. It's bringing sustainable development at the local community. Mm, uri kubona iyo umuntu yajyaga mu ishyamba imwitwaje gatuza na zamaraga wenda nk'ibyumweru bitatu. Ariko ubu ngubu zizajya zishobora nko kumara uzabikuba nk'inshuro eshatu ukunkurikije uko nabonye tubigenze. Dalagua Health is investing in a large-scale public health program here in Rwanda that's designed to address several of the leading causes of illness and death. The Dalagua Health program in Rwanda is made up of three rollouts. A pilot where we distributed to one village to evaluate acceptance of the water filter and cook stove. A recently completed phase one program of 15 villages, about 10,000 people, that we use to evaluate our distribution, education, and monitoring methods and to evaluate stove and filter adoption and a phase two program that will cover all 30 districts in Rwanda, targeting the poorest 30% of each village, about 600,000 households in total. These poorest households, called Ubudehe levels one and two, are defined on a village level and already receive targeted assistance, including health insurance from the national government. These households are also considered outside of the retail market for these kinds of technologies. Delagua Health is able to finance this program through using the United Nations Clean Development Mechanism where we earn carbon credits from the use of our technologies. For example, when people use the cook stoves, they reduce their use of firewood. This directly translates to less CO2 in the atmosphere. We earn those carbon credits and we sell them to buyers that help finance the program. We earn carbon credits based on the actual reduction in use of firewood associated with the three stone fires, but also with the water filters. Both for the people who currently boil the drinking water, as well as those who have a demand for clean water that is not being met because they can't afford the time or money needed to clean their water. People may not be able to find or afford wood in Rwanda, a country that is nearly deforested, or it takes too long to boil their water, or they don't have access to or can't afford another treatment method like chlorine or a water filter. So because demand for energy, chlorine, water filters, or other methods of clean water can't be met, these people end up drinking dirty water that can cause severe health problems. The United Nations came up with suppressed demand as an incentive for projects like ours to operate in least developed countries. It's designed to be more of a preventative than a cure to climate change and energy consumption challenges. The alternative is asking countries to get dirty before they get clean. There is an added bonus for aid agencies and if they want to support projects such as this, instead of taking the upfront risk as they would normally have to do, they could now support in the form of pay for performance. For example, they, alongside the carbon credits, they may be able to pay us a small sum for each device that's still in use. This could be known as a health credit. It's very important for Deragua Health to work with the government of Rwanda in the implementation of this public health project. Uh, at highest level, the Minister of Health and Deragua has established an integrated action plan and 
this is executed using a very strong existing network of community health workers. They are the one to educate the population how to use water filters and improved cook stoves. We take community health workers, environmental health officers and hygiene club presidents that have already been trained by the Ministry of Health and we train them on our program. Community health workers go household to household with a smartphone and can do things like take pictures, do GPS coordinates, scan the barcodes of our technologies, and ask household identifying questions. The key to success in any market, developed or developing world, is making, is the education. I, I, I can't move away from that, it's the education. The problem with education is it's incredibly expensive. So what's so exciting about carbon credits and other forms of revenue that can be paid on a performance basis is it means it can be financed on a profitable basis, which means the education can stay in place for the duration of the project, be that five years or 25 years. Once a month in Rwanda, an entire community comes together to perform a required community service project and also meets about the community. We call a special meeting where we can distribute our technologies. The day starts with a presentation about our technologies. We go through the usage and the maintenance of them and also some important health messaging. After that, we do a distribution with the community health workers using the smartphones. You know, my work with the uh, uh, community health workers around, we go visit the house, each house, house to house, and then if we found some mistake, we correct them, and then uh, also we receive the report from if we have uh, broken freight so that we can go back to fix it. The London School will be here for four years, uh, working with uh, Del Agua and its other research uh, partners to, to, to demonstrate uh, and to confirm uh, whether this uh, intervention is indeed uh, effective at improving the health and, and well-being of the target population. At Portland State University, we've developed a sensor system that independently measures with sensors the usage frequency and performance of both the stoves and filters, records this on board, and then transmits the data over the cell phone networks nightly directly to the internet for analysis. Our original involvement in this sector was in providing water testing kits. It was always the ambition of our organisation to move from testing to a situation where we could provide support in, in terms of actually treating water to provide the highest quality water for our population. And our first project is going to be in Rwanda, a country of about 12 million people, most of whom don't have access to clean water. Nararutwarabyishimiye Muko turi kunyenda tukura tugakora ibintu byiza cyane ndashaka kugira ngo shimire bitende cyerekezo kiza dufite kandi kiduhikize